What's happening, y'all? J.R. Raymond back again, coming to you from home, where we're going to discuss that burning topic again, the whole urethane debate. Now, we've seen that some rules have been changed in the PBA and USBC, all of these things. So we're going to discuss that as well as go and watch one of Ron Hicklin's videos where he does a little bit of data capture himself and shows the difference between a soft bowling ball and a more firm bowling ball as far as the hardness goes on a durometer scale. Uh, and we're going to show you all of those things leading up to why this is important and why the rule changes are put into effect. So for those of you who don't understand this topic, like me, I don't know enough about it. And it's good to see these things uh, and understand why just a few points in softness can make a big difference in bowling ball reaction and uh, give you more of an advantage. And we're going to take a look at all that here in a minute. Stay tuned. All right, so I've got Ron's video pulled up here, and what he did was he actually um, brought somebody in who used to work with Ebonite International and did all the testing uh, for the hardness and all that good stuff. And as you can see here on the screen, they tested a bunch of different bowling balls, and a bunch of them actually do come up well too, way too soft. Um, and he actually, the funny thing is, is if you, you look here at number two, he took a bowling ball, he took a 20, 2022, 21, um, purple hammer essentially, and he used a chemical to soften it to 48 and a half. So, and then a another one he used, and uh, it was softened to 64.9, and then he had a bunch of other ones. So, you can see, and even with the new specter rule, um, by storm, they actually removed the specters. And you look here, and you see three of them that they tested did come below that 73 durometer reading. And then that specter number 14 was right at 73. So um, it appears possibly there's an issue there. Uh, I, I'm not really sure at all what the situation was with Storm in that whole thing. But now, as you know, that new Storm specter is uh, decertified and we can no longer use that in competition anywhere. So uh, kind of sucks. I know that was a ball that was being used quite a bit on tour. Some of those guys were using it out there. Uh, I didn't quite see the use for it. It was too clean for me, which is really weird to think of a softer bowling ball being too clean, especially after we watch this. But as you watch this, you'll notice that he's going through and he's testing a bunch of these, like and they test it about 50 years, so in 10 very, spots very meticulous about how to he test does it, it all. and where he does it. In addition to what you're seeing here, one of the notes that's, that needs to be made is that the derober that we're using is much different than what you would typically find if you were to go buy one on Amazon. You see that, that uh, silver weight at the top? Well, that silver weight is what's actually applying the pressure to the bowling ball. So it's very consistent and repeatable as opposed to manually trying to press. Right. So what? So just because he's pulling that, all he's doing is pulling that hammer down, that handle down to get the pin to touch the ball. And then the weight of the, the silver weight at the top is actually what's putting the pressure down. His hand isn't really creating the pressure there. Uh, at least I'm pretty sure that's how it works. Uh, that would be the common sense way of seeing how it works. So that way you get the same pressure on every spot every time. So he pulls the hammer down just to that one spot and resets the dial and all that to make sure it's uh, in the right area so you can get the correct durometer reading each time. So he tests all these bowling balls and goes through, and this is the list that you find in all the hardness um, based on the testing. So when we move forward, he gets past all this. You see he's testing the specters as well, and he gets through them. Then what they do here is pretty interesting. What they're looking for is a footprint. Uh, the footprint is basically how wide that ball is impacting the lane. The bigger the footprint, the more surface of that bowling ball is actually touching the lane. So think of it like, you know, like tires. You know, if if your if your tire is much thinner, how much more traction do you have from a tire that is much wider? Obviously, the much wider tire is going to create a lot more traction than the thinner tire is. So this is kind of the same concept. So what he does is he that rolls these bowling balls the footprint, um, of the bowling ball. so over carbon paper a ball on a ramp from a set and then you're measuring. And really what we're trying to capture here is the footprint of that bowling ball. So you can watch us kind of change out the, the piece distance. of paper. You can watch us kind of set the bowling ball up. And so when you look at the chart over here on the bottom left, you can see the softer the bowling ball, the bigger the footprint. 
So keep that in mind as we watch through. Down the ramp. And the whole point here, like I said, is just for us to see, you know what, does the softer bowling ball leave a bigger imprint um, on the sheet of paper? Or does the harder bowling ball leave a smaller imprint? Or does any of that even matter? So once again, I mean, we're just trying to show you what we did here. Um, not to say that this is the only way to do it, uh, but this was the way that we thought would be best a representative um, to be able to find out if, in fact, there is uh, a correlation between the bowling ball softness. To be shown, but you can at least see what we did. Now, for this last test, we wanted to try something that was also kind of unique. We wanted to actually roll a bowling ball down the lane. And this is a flat pattern. This is actually the red square pattern that we're using. And we're, what we're trying to do here is we're capturing some speed data. So we're using Specto. We've got Specto. We're able to capture some speed data. Or sp so now the new part of the test is to roll the balls down the ramp and capture the speed and see which one of these bowling balls lost more speed than the other. Obviously, um, the more hard bowling balls were losing less speed. The softer bowling balls were losing more speed. And why is that important? because that's what we're trying to do. When we're talking about getting a ball to slow down, it's about creating traction and creating that bigger footprint to get the ball to change direction and to make its motion into the pins and create the room for error that we're looking for. And here in a little bit, you're gonna understand why that room for error is important or how we can create room for error with the softer balls. In lost data, right? That's kind of what we're looking for here. Now you say, well, what about the pin placement and the CG placement and mass buys, all that kind of things? What we did was we specifically oriented the balls. You can look when you watch the ball go down the lane uh, when it's set up. The pin is at 12 o'clock. The CG is at 6 o'clock. And what this basically does is this neutralizes uh, the core position, right? The ball is in a rolling position and not sliding. So that's good and bad. It's good because it's very easy to repeat. Um, it's bad because it's not really how a bowling ball rolls down the lane. As a so what he's saying, he puts the pin directly above, facing straight up on the ceiling, and the CG facing towards the pins. So that way the core is essentially just rolling on top of each other. If you all remember the small test that I did with the um, CG placement on each side, you roll a bowling ball with CG facing one way, the ball's going to hook one way. You roll the bowling ball with the CG facing the other, it's going to hook that way. So um, and that's just with that extra little ounce or two of side weight is all it does to make that difference. So this was to make sure that it's rolling end over end, because if it you know, was to be sitting one side or the other, it would create more slowdown. And then you would bring the core into effect. You know, the bigger cores or the smaller core, the bigger cores would create more slowdown than the smaller cores, of course. So, um, yeah, so that makes it a little bit easier to test that way, as long as we're taking the core out of the equation ball goes down the lane, there's actually All right, so now when uh, we throw the ball, the data that we are going to show you. And now, before, we saw, before we even show this, keep in mind, being perfectly accurate in this test isn't what's important. What you want to pay attention to are the bowling balls and the shapes that they're making, you know, the, the amount of hook you're getting from one versus another. Now you watch these harder durometer bowling balls go down the lane, you can see a big difference in ball motion versus the softer durometers. It was actually bowling. And this was kind of where the aha moment kind of happened, where we really began to understand the benefit of hardness. So remember, we're bowling on a completely flat pattern. So if I throw it to the left, that ball's not supposed to recover at all. If I throw it to the right, it's supposed to hook too much because the pattern is completely flat. But what's interesting is, is when the bowling ball is hard, you don't see the recovery that you see when the ball is soft. Yeah, so you watch all these shots and they're just kind of floating. They're just going and they're just getting to the left and they're never really picking up the lane. Um, so when you get to the softer bowling balls, you watch how much more they actually pick up the lane and it gives you room for error. Now all of a sudden you throw it even a little bit further to the left, it still picks up and creates traction because it's creating a bigger footprint, a bigger, uh, a bigger hook range in the middle of the lane. You also don't have any room for error. So when you're watching me throw these shots, you know, Here's, if, if I'm throwing out. the hard bowling ball, I'm not being able to get any sort of miss error. No sort of look at the amount like and, and that wasn't that's crazy how much more that actually picked up. So and we're not talking much. We're talking nine points on the drometer scale there. Nine points made that ball hook that much more. Will two or three points make a difference? 
I mean, if nine is making that much of a difference, you've got to imagine that even two or three points is going to make a difference as well. So that's where the discussion comes into play. Room for error, no sort. If I throw it a little harder, it just over pushes. But that kind of all smooths out. Yeah, it gets to the gutter. The the it still gets ball. to the pocket. And that is kind of what led us to begin to understand the value of the softer ball. So look at it this way. The pattern is a flat pattern, and it's clipped, meaning there's oil to a certain spot, and then it shuts off, and that's the end of it. But what happens is, when you're throwing your ball down and laying on that kind of pattern, if you're throwing the ball and you throw it a little harder, it's going to over push, and that's just what happens. But if you have a softer bowling ball, the beautiful thing about that is you can actually watch the ball slow down. And our data would indicate that the softer bowling balls do slow down. In fact, it was a mile an hour slower. So let's look at this. So the softer bowling balls, you know, all pretty much right at the same speed between 18.8 and 19.4 within a half mile an hour. I mean, you're, you're talking. And actually, the softer bowling ball, most of his shots came off his hand faster than the harder bowling ball. The harder bowling ball came off his hand a little bit slower, and yet the, the softer bowling ball still slowed down quite a bit more. Look at the speed losses here. Over five miles an hour in speed loss versus the three, 3.8, four, 3.8, you know? So, I mean, it's kind of crazy to look at how much that softer bowling ball slows down compared to the four more firm, harder bowling ball. Then from the harder bowling ball, well, that's slowing down allows the bowling ball to begin to generate friction a little faster than typical. So and it's, again, because it's going down faster and it's softer with that wider footprint, it can actually begin to generate friction earlier, which makes the pattern play like it's tapered. It's okay. not tapered, but it plays like it's tapered. And you say, well, why does that matter? Well, on a house shot, the lane pattern tends to be tapered, meaning that there's more oil in the front. And as you go down the lane, it begins to, the, the volume of the oil begins to get less and less and less, and that's tapering the pattern. What that does is that creates miss room for when you the bowler. It allows you to be able to miss and still be able to get back to the pocket. Well, on a PBA pattern, or a sport pattern, or a flat pattern, you don't have that, and that's why that's one reason they're so much harder. But as you're watching me throw these shots, you can see I can miss and the ball recovers. That's because we are taking a pattern that is flat and making it play like it's not flat. And that is very, very advantageous. Now, some of the other differences are, you know, uh, my rev rate is only 350 RPMs. Most pros are 500 RPMs or higher. Look at that. So they're going to be able to get this effect out of bowling balls that are harder than the 64.9 durometer bowling ball that I threw. So, so what he's saying is basically the higher your rev rate, the more surface area you can create out of a bowling ball. So the more of a footprint you can actually create. Um, because you're creating more traction, you're creating more friction, all of that stuff. Now, I know a lot of people are going to say, well, if that's the case, why don't we just, why don't ever, why doesn't everybody just use 500 grit bowling balls? Well, because that's not the purpose of it. We don't want it to hook early. We want it to be able to pick up in the middle of the lane and still create that traction down there. So that's been the unique difference between the purple hammers and everything else is this ball has been able to get through the fronts, get to the middle and start to pick up and create that tapered shape down lane versus, you know, a bowling ball that is at 500 having so much friction or 360 or whatever it may be, a reactive bowling ball with that friction that's going to create it so much earlier and then essentially use up all its energy and have nothing down lane. You're taking away a lot of your miss room by doing that unless you're playing straighter up the lane. So it's a it's a big difference when we're looking at these things. It says that a pro bowling on a flat pattern would be able to see more of this this tapering effect from the bowling ball and be able to take advantage of it, right? So that makes a lot of sense as well. And then you add into the fact that bowling balls, specifically the purple hammer, you got a lot of data that shows that ball actually gets softer. That ball is approaching the 64.9. So imagine what happens if you got a purple hammer. So when you watch that shot, you see those two balls to go together. Those were both the, the harder bowling balls. And you can see... It, it gives you the illusion that it's trying to pick up, but then it doesn't continue off of it, and it just kind of keeps floating down lane, whereas the softer ones, they make the same pickup, but then they continue and keep going strong off that back of the pattern. That's the you big start, difference. But then as you're using it, it goes down to 65 or 64 or even lower. Well, that means this bowling ball is actually getting better over time, right? And that's the beautiful thing about this particular product is that it actually gets better over time. Now, 
I believe that that's probably part of the reason why it's been so popular and so generally accepted as a unique piece in the market, especially at the professional level. I also think that the at the continuation there level, and people that, like myself that blow mostly house shots, there isn't an advantage like that because the taper's already built into the pattern. So you look at this house shot graph here, you can see there's already a taper. Yeah, so basically all he does so now is he just talks about tape. the 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 difference between a house shot and the the sport patterns and why using urethane isn't really beneficial on a house shot versus a sport shot. On patterns like that, you're trying to create taper. On the sport patterns, you're trying to create room for error left and right, which is what a softer, you know, urethane type bowling ball will do for you. And on the house shots, you already have that built in. So now you're taking a a bowling ball such as a, a urethane ball and you're you're essentially taking away hitting power, you know, so you don't need that urethane ball to create that shape. So anybody that's using them on that league pattern, you're essentially, you're messing yourself up along with other people on the lane. Maybe that's a good technique is if you're bowling somebody for first place and you just want to make sure they, they don't bowl well and you let your guys bowl better or something. I don't know. You're just trying to do that. I, I have no idea why anybody would use it. I don't understand why people use a urethane ball on a league pattern. It really doesn't make any sense to me when you have already missed room left and right. Just use the powerful reactive balls and you'll be okay. Um, but that's the other thing to think about is for those of you that are buying these urethane balls and all that and because because your lanes hook so much, you're buying them for the wrong reason. You know, you want a, a urethane ball to go straighter, buy an older one. You know, buy one from 2000 or 1990 or something. Buy those ones. Those ones are a harder durometer reading and those will go straighter. You know, but these new urethane balls, they're not meant to go straight. They're not meant for that. This is, these are, these are just a completely different type of bowling ball. So those of you trying to say, well, my lanes hook so much, I need a urethane ball. Uh, and you go out and buy a purple hammer, you're buying it for the wrong reason. So just keep that in mind the next time you're, you know, you're out trying to figure out how to get your ball to go straighter. You need a twist. You need a rhino. You need, you know, whatever it may be to get your ball down the lane a little bit further. Not a, not a urethane ball. Um, so the PBA changed its rules to where, you can only use urethane balls from 2020 or newer. Um, I don't even know if that's enough of a rule change because a lot of these newer purple hammers are still getting soft over time. And a lot of them have, you know, after competition have already failed some of the testing afterwards and gotten below that 73 range. Because like Ron said in that video, they get softer through time. And even in the block, you could have a 74 or 73 durometer reading purple hammer. Um, and then by the end of the block, it's reading at 65 or 66 or something. Now, I'm just throwing numbers out there. I don't know for sure that that's the case, but they do get softer throughout because I know Jason Sterner had uh, a couple of his purple hammers that failed after the block going into a TV show. But then when he brought them back or when they retested them the next morning, they actually passed. They were above that range. So the heat, the oil, you know, everything in it at the time, you know, once they get to room temperature and stuff, they come back up, you know, so that changes things a little bit there. Um, but still the, the idea of these bowling balls getting softer is the, is the topic at hand. Um, in USBC actually revoked, they took away certification for the purple hammers that were made in 2016 and 17, mostly because of this situation. I can't read their mind, but I would imagine most of those balls were probably coming out softer, you know, well softer from the beginning. So and then they only get softer as they go. Uh, some of those old purple hammers probably could be getting down into the low 60s and create a lot more than you know what some of these newer ones are creating now. So I hopefully this gives you a little bit of an understanding, you know, in combination of me talking about it and then Ron Hicklin also coming on and giving you the information there. If you want to go and see that video, make sure to go over there. Just type in uh, Ron Hicklin Jr creating the difference. You'll be able to see all his videos. You can go watch that full video and he goes through and explains everything minute by minute. I just tried to do it, you know, shorthand showing you what was going on there. Um, but keep in mind, those older purple hammers are no longer usable. You don't want to use them in league anyway. Uh, probably not going to do you much good if you're trying to use them in league. So uh, don't even bother. Just get yourself a lower end reactive, get a raw, get a twist, get a rhino, get a tropical surge, you know, some of those weaker end you know, a hustle, stuff like that is going to be more beneficial if you're if you're bowling on very hooking lanes and stuff. Those weaker reactive balls are going to be better for you than a big, you know, giant urethane ball like that. So keep that in mind. I'm going to get out of here. 
I just wanted to talk about this real quick before uh, leading into the Masters so you guys have this to watch a little bit. Yes, I'm going to have Purple Hammers with me out there. Actually, I have a Purple Hammer. I have a Pink Widow out there. And uh, I have my uh, uh, Double Cross out there as well. So, you know, you never know when you're going to need those urethanes. So I sent those out there. They're ready to rock while I, when I get out there, um, just in case. But I'm taking a bunch of different bowling balls. I might make a video about some of the new bowling balls that I'm taking. I know I'm taking the Speed and the Defender. Those two for sure are going out with me. And I've got my 3D offsets out there. Um, you know, my Zen, my Dark Code, all that stuff's going to go with me. I never know when I'm going to need it for the burn. So who knows what's going to happen. But uh, I'm out of here. And uh, until next time, hey, make sure to subscribe, like, comment, do all that. Let me know what you think of these new PBA rules and USB-C rules. When do you ever use the Purple Hammer? You know, and make sure to hit that join button. Join so you can be a part of that new giveaway that I've got. I'm giving away a bowling ball for the Masters. So winner of the drawing will win a bowling ball. So click that link in the description and go win yourself a bowling ball. So until next time, guys, I'm out of here. And we'll see you guys later. Take care.